want it to happen. I didn't want none of this to happen. Me, I'm just a regular moat, trying to run my lap in the rat race, maybe grab a stinking piece of cheese and get out before anybody knows I'm there. But it was you. It was you, fate. You and your fickle fingers that wove this web of doom and destruction around these poor people. Oh, I know you're out there, fate. I know you're looking down on me, doing what you like to do most, laughing at us puny mortals. Well, go ahead. I'll make it easy for you. I'll count to three, and on the count of three, just go ahead and laugh at me, fate. One, two, three! <laughs> I bet you can do better than that. I bet you can skewer my heart with the sharp barbs of your malice. On the count of three, really let me have it. One, two, three! <laughs> Did that feel good, Faith? Look, would it make you feel fine if I went ahead and told you the whole story? Of course, you already know it since you designed that it would happen, but as long as we're here and we have time to kill, why not? Why not look down, fate, upon these four people, those on whom you shot your most pointed barbs of destruction? Do you remember them, fate? Do you remember this woman here? Go ahead, fate, remind me. In what humiliating place did you decide this character would die? Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. <laughs> but not just in Amsterdam, in a particular kind of place in Amsterdam. What kind of place was it? Brothel. Red light. A red light brothel in Amsterdam. And this woman here, do you remember what little, innocuous, seemingly insignificant object led to her downfall? Volkswagen bug. A Volkswagen bug. What could be more insignificant than that? <laughs> That's right. No gas. No gas. A Volkswagen bug. And this man here, who did you decide that this man would kill by the end of our story. The From, leading lady. And which of these three were that? The one in the black. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the black. The one in the black whose dying words were, do you remember what you designed her dying words to be? Black widow. Black widow. <laughs> That's right. So how did it happen? How did we go from a couple of people just trying to plug along and not bother nobody to... I die in a brothel in the red light district of Amsterdam. I meet my demise through a Volkswagen bug. Me, killing the lady in black. My dying words being black widow. <laughs> Well, sit back, enjoy your handiwork. Oh, hey, just for fun. Let's say this was one of those movies, you know? One of those movies they're cranking out of Hollywood now. One of those crime dramas starring Bogey and McCall. If this was one of those movies, what would you title it? The Spider's Web. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, sit back. And enjoy, if you can, <laughs> the spider's web. I didn't start out dead. <laughs> I was very much alive at the start of the story. I was alive and lonely, looking for a place or somebody to put my loneliness on hold. As I walked the 
dark San Francisco street and felt the drizzle on my face and beautiful long walks. <laughs> I noticed in the distance flashing lights. I think it was a nightclub I saw with a pink neon flamingo. It's lights flashing on and off with no head. Like a poorly trained dog and the crotch of a stranger, I found myself very shy. I walked into that nightclub, the Tropicana. Your name? Maria von Lafla. Can you spell that? Von Lafla. L-A. La La? La La. Oh, I do not think I know you. It's my stage name. I have one in Amsterdam. I'm new in town. Are you an actress here? One would call me an actress. I play many roles at different times, depending on the time of day and who I see. Tell me about you. What brings you to my flamenco nightclub? <laughs> You're the owner. I am. I'm here because I'm looking for someone to, to give me a job and make me feel like I have a family again. I can do that for you. I can give you a job and I can find a family for you. One every night. <laughs> That's not quite what I meant. I meant a job, you know? Yes. I need money. I can pay you. Or let me say your family will pay you. Tell me more what you mean by family. Well, every night you get to play make-believe. <laughs> I can do that. And you can make believe anything that you like. <laughs> can you do that? I think I might be able to. Well, then you're hired. <laughs> that was easy. Easy for my fire to be. Yes, so, it's very easy here. You just have to follow the rules. No stealing. No killing at night, only during the day. <laughs> <laughs> And you must smile most of the time. Can you do that? <laughs> yes, I can. And no sweating. I don't sweat. Well, then, good. This job is perfect for you. Let's see what you can do. OK. I'll bring somebody back. Stay there. <laughs> I was confused. I was glad to have a job, but she was a really weird woman. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Von Dalla. Hello. Victoria Volkswagen. She was a real classy dame. Blonde hair that went down for miles, and legs that went up higher than the Rockies. <laughs> You could tell there was something going on behind those eyes, though. A look of loneliness that couldn't be broken by one night of frivolity. But I was a broken man, too. So I decided to give it a try. <laughs> sorry, Victoria. Sorry for interrupting. Let's do the introduction thing. My name's John. Mm, hi, John. That's your first name? That's right. I prefer not to give my last in a place like this. You never know what you're going to end up losing, if you know what I mean. I wanted to make sure that it was his name and not his role in my life. <laughs> <laughs> See, John, I may call you by your first name, I'm presuming, since I only know your first name. <laughs> by your last name, I might call you Mr. All right. You seem like a fine Jane. I'll one tell you, certainly one of the finest I've seen. My last name, my last name. Garbage. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> You're right. 
way you were in the war, and you were hurt. You got it in the head, didn't you, sir? You're right. You suffered from amnesia. I've been going by all sorts of different job names that everybody knows. <laughs> Candy, Kennedy, Edwards. But I don't know my own last name. I took a German rifle shot straight to the beam. Boom! Can't remember anything but my first name. And I used to love coming to this place. Come to find out. It's a nest. German bikers like yourself, Miss Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I, I know that Miss von Lachlach is German also? Why I hear she comes straight from Amsterdam. I may be of German descent, but I'm a hundred percent American. All right. I must say that I do remember more than one schnitzel I enjoyed a German country girl's hand. I might have been one of those country girls, because I was a nurse in the war. I saved a lot of you GIs. That's how I could tell you have that look of a man with a brain injury. Victoria? Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? I, I was hoping to meet someone I knew, but I didn't expect it would be you. Well, say, is this a two-for-one special? <laughs> Victoria, my arch nemesis. Victoria, who stole my husband. Victoria, in a place like this. Oh, sweet justice. So I see you're traveling alone, huh? Yeah, I was rolling through town. I saw the lights on, and someone told me I could get a good drink around here. Didn't expect to see the kind likes of you here. Who's your male friend? Are you going to introduce us? John. This is Charlotte. Pleasure, Charlotte. Oh, your lips, so soft. So, Victoria, I'm glad to see you uh, trying to use your assets again. Well, if you have them, it's worth using them. If you don't, I guess you just have to make do. You know all about that, right? John, would you be a darling? I'll, uh, can you get me a drink over there? Of course. Well, looks like you need a drink too then. Mickey, why don't I just be a sterling fellow and get one for both of you? It was like a mind trick. One of them was pale, the other one dark. I couldn't decide which way I wanted to go that way. <laughs> what brings the chair? You know I live here. It's a free country, right? No. Oh. I get to be where I want. In I want Amsterdam, to California, just outside of San Francisco, are you kidding me? <laughs> what are the chances? Are you thinking that I came here to see you? To bump into you, of all people? My arch rival? Someone I disdain? You got what you wanted. You took Mario from me. But I see it didn't last, obviously, because you're crawling up in here all alone. I got what I wanted. When I was done, I let it go. You should learn the same. Thank you. Well, ladies, let's uh, let's have a toast, huh? The old friends and the new friends. <clears throat> John. I was watching the whole thing from my seat in the back. I was a plant, you see. Not a fern or a frog. <laughs> it's not the kind of plant I was. Instead, I was there to make sure nothing went wrong in the club. Kind of like an undercover police officer, except I wasn't a police officer. Instead, I was hired muscle. Everything was taking a turn for the dangerous, and I decided it was time to talk to the boss lady about what was going on out in the hall. So I went back to her private office. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, we're playing a dangerous game. You promised me that we'd go straight when we set up here. And here you 
are back to the old tricks. They found us over in Europe and they'll find us over here. I'm telling you, why can't we just play it straight and try to go clean? Because this is how we make some money. Money? Is that at all if it was about for you? Just money? Isn't it always about money? Sure, maybe when you first found me in the street and you hired me to work for you. But then things had changed. Don't you feel things have changed? I know they have changed. That's why I have to change my accent to fit into this country. But it's not working. We are broke, don't you see? I need to hire these girls. Listen, why can't we just <laughs> run a nice club, me and <clears throat> Why can't we just admit that the old days are gone? We can go legit here in America. <sighs> I don't know how. Don't know how? I don't know how. All I know is what to sell. And it works. We make money. Sure. Hand over money. fist, we make money. But it's illegal here. They're going to turn this place inside out. I'm listening to what's happening out there. There are schemes being cooked up. People's lives are being played with. Dangerous people are starting to gather here. This place is getting a reputation, I'm telling you. A reputation that you can't afford to have follow you. You are so pessimistic. That's because I'm cynical. <laughs> Look, would it embarrass me if I told you I love you? Yes. Well, then I won't say. <laughs> well, tell me anyway. Embarrass yourself. Let's just say I did. Let's just say I loved you. And let's just say I wanted to see us sock away a little bit of dough in order to buy a nice house somewhere. Maybe out in the suburbs like Levittown, you know? Some place that's nice. Some place where we can live a little bit of a life together on a square patch of grass and not worry about things like this anymore. Oh, that sounds like the American dream that I have wanted. All right, I'm going to lose my accent. I love you. But I know that I have shamed you. It's what I have done for a living. It's what I know. It's how I have a family. Can you be my family and not pay me? I would like to be your family, and I can't afford you anyway. <laughs> All we have to do is make sure we get all of the illicit activity out of this place before the coppers come. That's all. If they find a clean operation, we're free and clear. Just go out there and close it down, that new blonde dame you were hiring before. Oh. Get rid of her. She I can smell trouble from a mile away, and that dame is trouble. Oh, but she's perfect for us. She will make us so much money. She has the look of innocence. Oh. We need to walk away from all of this. And that's the first step. You need to go out there and get rid of her. Kill her? No, just fire her! <laughs> go, lady. Fire. Lady. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there is a lady dick outside sniffing around. Oh. I told you, the cop is here already. You take care of this. Me? Yes, you take care of this. I'll, I'm gonna go get, I'll fire her. I will fire her. I'm gonna go do that now. I went back out into the main hall where the police detective had barged in. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of what? This is a club, a nice upstanding club. <laughs> we in San Francisco, we know what this kind of club looks like. I've been sniffing around here for a couple weeks now and I don't like what I'm seeing. I see young women coming in and out. Men coming in and out, you have any explanation for me about your clientele? Yeah, we're a public establishment. People can come in and out all day if they want. Why don't you get the nice detective a drink, huh? One drink. I'm not drinking. I'm on the job. I'm not one of those cops you're used to. One that can be plied with alcohol. Oh, no. No, we're here to clean up the streets of riffraff like you and your club. It's well, not going to last. 
I'm telling you, we're clean here. There's nothing you can find. Go ahead, look around. We got nothing to hide. Well, why don't you take me down to your establishment right now? We can see what that looks like. Well, this is the establishment. This is all we got. We got this main hall here. Strangely empty for one in the morning. Well, that's right, because we're an upstanding, religiously motivated organization. <laughs> so from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, everyone's in church. Break. Right. With the headless flamingo outside. That's right, the headless flamingo is the uh, Floridian uh, icon which substitutes for Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, we're in California. That's right, but we are heavily influenced by the Floridian sisters of the, the Bombay uh, blah blah blah. You're talking quite a bit of nonsense. Listen, I'm telling you we're clean. That's all you need to know. Why don't you get out of here and go home? Boss, she knows everything. Everything. You can see it in her eyes. She's going to get us into jail. That's all right. I'm telling you, all we have to do is get rid of the blonde dame. As soon as she's out, that's the end of the illicit activity around. Should we kill her? No! We're just going to fire her! <laughs> oh. Jackson. It's been a long time. I know you were sitting back there when I came in here earlier. I tried not to make eye contact with you. Jackson, we go way back. We went this far. <laughs> <laughs> On the seesaw as little kids. Me down, you up. Me down, you up. A uh, habit we continued well into adulthood. Yes. <laughs> yes, I saw you. Of course I saw you. I was sitting right there. Jackson. Well, what's it going to take for me to shake you off my feet? Jackson. I know that the cops are breathing down your neck. I know that they've got something over on your little lady friend there, the owner of this establishment, and that you need a little bit of help getting out of your little pickle. You need the money to continue doing your illicit affairs, selling girls. Listen, why? Selling girls. I don't want to do that anymore. Why doesn't anybody believe me? I'm trying to get out, see? I want to go straight. I want to go clean. I want to just buy a little house and know what I want to do, believe it or not. I want to open up an auto body shop. Remember when I was a kid? Remember how I always used to like to tinker around with the cars? with the old Volkswagens? Remember how I used to love to putter in the garage all day long? I want to make that dream come true for you, and I will. But you have to do a little thing for me. Listen, the last time I did a little thing for you, I ended up spending two years in the pen. You're it's, dangerous, and I know it. It's a teensy, incy, weensy little thing. It's always a teensy, weensy little thing with you. I'm not going to fall prey to your wiles again this time. Jackson. OK, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that blonde. Victoria. I'm gonna fire her. You're gonna kill her. I'm gonna kill her. No, wait a minute, stop! I'm not gonna kill her. Why does everybody want to kill her? Why can't we just fire her? What's she to you? What's she to me? She ruined my life. She took the love of my life. You remember him, Mario? Sure I do. Yeah, well she stole him right from underneath me. And I never got over him. And I've never looked at another man the way I have at him again. So, I want her gone. It's not enough for her to be living on this planet with me. She doesn't deserve to breathe oxygen. She's a waste of it. You're going to take her down. There was something about this woman that I could never get rid of inside. Even though I knew she was bad for me, every time she wanted me, she could snap her fingers and I'd do her bidding. I've been trying to break away from her my whole life, it seems. Finally, I fall in love with a nice woman, someone I could have a shot with. But here I am, once again, being pulled inextricably back into the spider's web. Jackson, that picket fence, that white house, that beautiful woman. You want all of that, don't you? Sure I do. You could even maybe visit me from time to time. Don't start playing with my heartstrings. You'll do this for me, and I can make your legal troubles go away. 
Suddenly I started justifying the whole thing. Sure, we could fire the dame, but who's to say she's not going to go to the police? Meanwhile, the coppers are already breathing down our necks here. Maybe it was better off if she was dead. Suddenly I couldn't even tell if I was saying my own words or I was just saying what I knew she wanted me to say. But it didn't care because I had fallen deep, deep into her deep brown eyes. <laughs> and then, when she's dead, what happens to me and you? Well, it's like I said, honey, you can visit me from time to time. Because you're in love, right? I'm a supporter of love. I want to give you that. You could have your lady friend. You could give me a jingle, too. You know, if I ever gave you a jingle, I'd never stop jing jing jingling. <laughs> what do you say? Do you think it's too late for me and you to go back on that teeter-totter, so to speak? It was my favorite game. I'm not playing with you anymore. Can you love me or not? I will love you. Jackson. Stop. What's going on here? You were right after all. That blonde dame, she has to die. What? Yeah. That's the only way we're going to be able to get out of this thing clean. She has to die. Jackson, no. I'm not going to do this. No! Jackson! Tell me your name, sweet lady. I'm Maria. Maria, you're so beautiful. I know you love Jackson. And he loves you too. I can see it in his eyes. He would do anything for him, for you. And I <coughs> am old friends with Jackson. I would do anything to make his dreams come true. I saw the way you were looking at him. Oh, it's like the look of a, of, of, of a friend. He's like a little brother to me. <laughs> That's not how little brothers get looked at. Like they do in my household. <coughs> look. Are you telling him to kill? Is yes. that what you're doing? I am. Oh my God. I got away from this. You are not going to take my Jackson down. You are not taking him down. I don't know what your game is, but not here and not in the Flamingo Bar. Fine. Get out. Get her out. Tori, one hundred dollars. Oh, oh my God! In an hour? In an hour. Oh, you now are. What's it in there? <laughs> All we had to do was talk. You just talked. Bless you. Victoria, it is me, Molly. I felt I'd find you here. I heard rumors that you were back. What are you doing here? I came here to see you, Victoria. I told you it was over. May I please have a moment with her alone? Miss Domingo. Are you okay? I'm all right. Grazie. Victoria! Victoria, I should not stop thinking about you. You were the love of my life. When you had left me, it destroyed my heart. And I was in the most deepest despair imaginable, Victoria. So is that why you cheated on me? It was not what you'd think. I was just helping her out. It, uh, I it required her to be naked? <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. But it's not because I was making love to her. It's because she was making love to me. That makes all the difference in the world. Yes, it does make a difference, Victoria. You see, my heart was not given to her willingly. I'm not saying that she forced it upon me, of course. <laughs> Victoria. I deserve that. Yes. But you are pregnant with my child. I am? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is an old Sicilian ship. That explains the nausea. Yes. Up. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's why I needed to find you, because I, I cannot have my little bambino or bambina be without the father. And I realize now, Victoria, that my seed, my life, my heart, my soul belongs only to you, my love. Forgive me, Victoria. I promise you I would not let any other woman sit with me. <laughs> well, this changes things if 
I'm carrying your child. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started working here. John. I, I heard there was some trouble up here. I just couldn't forget about our conversation. There is no trouble up here. So. No trouble at all. Oh, it's a little personal. You know, I just paid $100 for a conversation. That's like four months' work. <laughs> conversation. You know I'm very articulate. <laughs> well, listen, I just wanted to say I gladly empty my entire bank account just for one more conversation with you. I'd love to talk to you. Does this guy give you trouble? Because you know, I'm the father of her child. Dina, do you have to just tell people like that? <laughs> yes, I do. I must proclaim to the world my love for you. I didn't know. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't care. Any any day we can make me crazy enough to pay a hundred dollars for a fifteen minute conversation. She is worth every penny. That I know. I'm just saying that same thing. Yes, you are. Do I kiss <laughs> Listen here, Pop. I don't care about a past. I don't even know mine. <laughs> so go ahead and kill it. You know, she just started calling me John Blank for short. And I thought it was cute. And if she, if she wants to spend the rest of her life talking to me, I gladly have it. But I tell you what, I won't let her have some Italian guy come pushing her around and telling her what to do. Flip-flopping in the war like you guys did? You guys can't be trusted. <laughs> Is that all you have to say now? Your stupid words? I think his words are very intelligent. Are you telling me that you want to side with this man? Do you, do you, do you, ah, okay. oh, oh. Then do it. Here. Give me. Give me if you wish. Do you Don't waste a bullet on him. Ah. Yes, you see. She, are you saying that that you will be with me even knowing that I'm carrying somebody else's child? Sure. You, Saying that you'd spend time with me even though you have no idea what I was like in my past? So you're saying you don't want to be with me now? I am saying that. I didn't ever want to be with you. You will regret this. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> Who knew? In a place like the Tropicana, just outside of San Francisco, in Little Amsterdam, <laughs> you could find a dame who'd knock your socks off and welcome you wholehearted, no matter what skeletons hid in your closet. And boy, I had some skeletons. See, I, I couldn't remember my last name, sure. I didn't remember one thing. I was a killer. Not your nice killer who hid behind some scope upon a clock tower. The mean, down of the dirt kind. I took a wire to the guy on the other side. That was me. That was the only thing I could remember. And that's when she walked in. John. She seemed familiar and I couldn't place it. The memory loss and all. John, John, what are you doing here? It's me, it's me, Lola. Oh my God, I just moved to town and I don't know a soul here. And I walk and I see you, you're kind of a mess with lipstick all over. Oh, oh, geez. I just met the most wonderful girl. She kissed me like, like you wouldn't even believe. It was like a movie star, but it doesn't matter. Are you, Lola, you know who I am? You mean you don't remember me? I don't remember much of anything except my name's John. Well, we grew up down the street from each other, Chong. We were childhood friends. You don't remember? You don't remember our friendship? I mean, we were friends for like for 10 years. John, what happened to you? It was the war. It was a dark time for everybody. Say, let me, let me get you a drink. 
This place is uh, an open bar kind of establishment. <laughs> Don't touch my drink! No. <laughs> I'll take two then. Well, what brings you to Little Amsterdam? Well, I just moved here. What are you doing here? I, this is where I washed up after the war. Well, pretty deft-handed. Well, you know, making men do what they're told. John, how's your mom? Last I heard, you were you were going to live with her and take care of her before you went off to the war. Well, it's the amnesia. Remember, I don't I don't know. I have a mom. <laughs> That's incredible. Where, where do I live? John, your your mom wasn't well the last time I spoke with you. I have a mom and she's dead. No, I I don't know. I'm asking you if she's doing okay. You sprang a sick mom on me. You don't even know the answer. <laughs> A lot to take in, Lola. John, I, I think you need some help. I needed help ever since I washed up on this San Francisco shore. Well, how long ago did you get out of the war? Look fresh. Yeah, it's been four, four or five years. I worked the docks for a while and went back to the only thing I was ever, ever really good at. The only thing I can remember, really. But I thought you were clean. No, that kind of life just haunts you. It comes back again and again. You can't really shake it. Yeah, well, it was really good seeing you. No, this is great news. You can't walk out now. I, I, I don't know anything about myself. You got to have dinner with me. Are, are you busy? Are you going somewhere right now? He didn't know anything about himself. I was standing in the back of the bar when I heard him say those words. Then I remembered he was the fella who was talking up that dame. And suddenly, a plan, a plot, no, no, a scheme came into my mind. Devious, yes. Impractical, probably. Implausible, sure. But I was going to make it work. I waited until the dame walked out, and he was alone. See you at the restaurant. All right. Dinner at 7, then. All right. See you then, John. That was really exciting. Who wouldn't be excited if they are about to have their whole past unveiled to them? It was just too bad Lola had a prior engagement. John! That's me. You know me, too? Know you? John Ratzenberg. Ratzenberg? <laughs> John! That's pretty jerk. What are you talking about? You, you don't remember. You never recovered your memory. I can't believe it. I was spitting out of control. I didn't know if he was buying it or not, but I was in for a penny and so in for a pound. Or should I say, in for a, uh, what's German for dollar? It's Deutschmark. In for a Deutschmark. <laughs> John, it's me, your partner. You're my partner? I'm your partner, John, me and you. We're the two highest paid assassins in all of Europe. Oh, oh well, that makes sense. That was a, the keenest thing I heard him say, you know? Two assassins in Europe? That's just the kind of job I remember myself doing. This guy had to be it. I felt like a boxer had been hit in the head twice. I was so punch drunk, so tantalizingly close to learning what my real past was. John. <laughs> I mean, we're still on the job, you know? Or at least I'm still on the job. I thought you were with me. We were supposed to meet up but down at the docks, but then you never showed up. And now here you are. I'm here now, and I'm, I'm back to work in a bit. I haven't done anything real serious lately. Is, it, is there something we should be in on? You don't remember. We're hired to kill Victoria Volkswagen. That must have been a long contract, because it's been five years. I've been looking for you ever since. <laughs> A long con. I get it. She must be tough to get to. Are you kidding me? I've been tracking her all over the world. I can't believe earlier I saw her with you. I thought for sure you had been back on the trail. And then it hit me. Like a Mack truck. A bell. Bong! Going off in my head. Victoria Volkswagen was that classy dame that just smooched the living pants off me. <laughs> Would I really kill her? Victoria Volkswagen. Blonde girl. Yeah! I was here in the club before. I saw you with her. Games like a giraffe? Sure. 
<laughs> John, there's $50,000 waiting in a secure location for us as soon as we make it happen. All I gotta do is kill this dame? That's all we ever have to do, kill dames, right? We kill them off, we get the money, me and you. We only kill dames? No, we kill anyone they have. <laughs> well, be a pretty sad way to make a living, if you know what I mean. There wasn't a lot of dames in the war on the other side of those rifles. John. All right, what's your name, mister? What's my name? Look at you. Me and you, we grow up like brothers, and you don't know my name. My name is, uh, my name's Peter, Peter Friedson. I just made that up. <laughs> All right, Pete. Call me Peter. All right, Peter. Yeah. Peter Friedson? Sure. <laughs> I was trying it on, but it didn't quite fit. It was like a cheap suit you bought at a department store. No, when I looked at him, he didn't look like a Peter Friedson. But I couldn't quite figure out who he was. All right, Peter. Peter Friedson? Look, are you in? Are you back or not? Sure. $50,000, John. Sure, sure, I'm back. Let's do it. Let's set up a meeting for the time and place. Sure. Let's do that. I walked away and walked back to my beautiful woman in black. The lights were low. <laughs> the pink flamingo was blinking on and off. We stood in the moonlight. It's all set, Doc. She's going to be taken care of. Oh, Jackson, you're my hero. And then as soon as that's done, it could be me and you, me and you forever. Is that right? Forever. All that stuff I said about Mario, that was just a lie. Really, it's all you. It's always been you. Ever since you would brush my hair and I would rub the back of your neck as little kids. Yes, we were frisky early on. It's always been you. I stood there in the night dreaming about our future together as the moon slid behind a bank of clouds and I watched her face as the entire scene faded away into blackness. So how did it happen, huh? How did it go from me spending a night of love with Charlotte to this? Me getting killed in a brothel in the red light district of <coughs> Amsterdam. Me meeting my demise by a Volkswagen bug. <laughs> me. Killing Charlotte. My last words being Black Widow. <laughs> it was late that night as I was rolling around in the sheets. Finally, the two of us fell asleep. But things elsewhere were happening. Police Lieutenant Johnson was a strict and stern woman who never let a clue get away from her the way a tiger never let its prey escape its claws. And that night, while I was lying blissfully in the sweaty sheets of Charlotte's hot water waterbed, <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Inspector Johnson had a visitor. Inspector Johnson? Yes. Oh. A lady did. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. I meant it as a compliment. What can I do for you? You probably know that some of the boys use me around here as a little bit of an undercover top and an informant. Now I've got something to tell you that strikes real close to home. I'm listening. They say that. You've got the sharpest mind on the force. They don't just let any woman on the force. I can see that. The way she looked at you, it's like she saw right through you, pierced right through your soul and knew every sin of your past. <laughs> I was beginning to feel pretty bad. What did you say your name was again? John. John. They call me John Blank. It's kind of my amnesia. I can't, can't remember anything since I got back from the war. Seem like a very useful informant. <laughs> well, I've been doing informing things for a while. I'm, I'm 
pretty good. I, I keep my mouth shut. Look at, listen, that's not the point. There's, there's a coup to kill a, a, a lady, a, a pretty lady, a lady that I might be in love with. A coup to kill a pretty lady? Does that have anything to do with that flamingo club? Yes, that's it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You see, I went there because I was feeling down and lonely, and, and your sergeant told me to go check it out and see what it was, gave me $100. And I spent it all in 15 minutes talking to one girl. <laughs> She's a hell of a girl. But then, this guy called himself Peter Freakson came up and, well, he told me I had to kill him. Now I want to kill him. Listen. A guy you don't know comes up to you and asks you to kill someone? Sounds interesting. You sure you don't know? I don't remember. See, it's the amnesia, I swear. It's, mm. it's a real thing. It's convenient. The only thing I remember about myself is, and I've not told anybody this, is that the war. I was decorated, but for doing all the wrong things, if you know what I mean. These hands came back red. With blood. Yeah, not, not actually red, like it's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> I kill a lot of guys in, in bad ways, sneaky, mean ways, ways that don't write up in the papers, you know? This man walks into my office. I've worked hard to get on the force. It's 1947. It's hard to be a woman in the police force. He comes in here spinning some sort of story about a stranger coming up to have him kill someone. I don't know about this guy. He says he's got blood on his hand. Metaphors are too frivolous. So keep going. Tell me what else you got. Well, that's all I got. His name is Peter Friesen. I saw him down at the Tropicana, you know, the Headless Flamingo Cup. And, and he wants me to kill somebody. You gotta, you gotta help me stop it, you see? Because because I love him. And she makes me feel like I'm a, a, a regular old guy, you know, just a, a G.I. Joe who, who doesn't have a tragic backstory. Who just came back looking for a dame in a white picket fence, you know? Two kids, a dog, pot roast on Sundays. <laughs> That's a very specific dream. Sure, it's the American dream, right? I wouldn't know anything about that. I went to work. All right, here's what we're going to do. You're going to get me into that club. And you're going to show me who this Peter Freakson character is. And you're going to show me the woman they want to kill. Do you oh. understand? Can you get me in there? All right, sure. All right, Mr. Johnson, I can get you in there, but can I just be frank here? All right, I'll allow it. You're going to have to sexy it up a little bit, Tane. You can't go in there with that steely-eyed glare staring everybody down, see? I'll see you right through you. You've got to blend in. Pretend to be my date or somebody's date. I had no idea how to sexy it up. This was going to be my most challenging undercover assignment yet. <laughs> <laughs> I accept. All right, maybe less firm handshakes and more hip sweats. There you go. That's, that's, that's doing it. All right. Do you have any of these women I can... Look at, so I can learn from them. I'm sure they'll be playing in the club. I'll just keep my eyes out. Watch your six, you watch mine. It'll be all right. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll watch your six, and you can you can watch mine too. But, but you know, less six talk and more flirting. But sex know? talk, got it. Don't, don't be, don't worry, blue. It's not that kind of well. It is actually. <laughs> I just tell you what, they see my face around there. Just come in and pretend you're. My date. You can be my date. I'll take you in there and we'll have a drink. And I'll point out who the bad guys are. <laughs> okay. Oh. How was that? Terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we walked out to the club. I was working on my hip swaying as we walked through the doors of this blue club. <laughs> All right, just tech back. Yeah. Whiskey. Uh, two of them. Yes, she likes her whiskey neat. Ha 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 ha. John, it's <laughs> nice to see you. And who is this lovely lady? Maria? This is, uh, 
this new dame I just met. Her name is uh, Sandra. Sandra. Oh, uh, let me have a look at you. Now, now, don't get any uh, ideas in your head, huh? She's not that kind of woman. Oh, no, she has potential. Look. <laughs> she's uh, she's from a small county in East Georgia. It's my first time wearing high heels. Georgia, you say that makes sense. We can work with you, dear. Please, work with me. Give them the finest. It's John. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Just keep that cigarette lit and pop a few back. Maybe I'll loosen you up some. You see that guy in the glamour look in the gray suit? That, is that Peter Freakson? That's what he said his name was. Peter Freakson, see? He tried to pass his place off as a church to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do some kind of worship in here, but it's not the Lord above. Well, that's what you're talking about. He is a shady character. I'm glad you brought this to my attention. John. All right, Pete. John. What's going on, John? Victoria is still alive. Well, yeah, I've got to plan the whole thing carefully. See, I can't just go popping off and shooting her right in the head. It's got to look like an accident. Isn't that how we always did it? Well, sure, but it doesn't look like you're planning anything carefully. It looks like you're hanging out with that dame over there. I got to tell you, there's something familiar about her, but I'm sure I've never seen her before. She's so sexy. <laughs> yeah, she can really dial up that sex appeal when she wants to, huh? You know me. New girl every day, trying them out every way. <laughs> Yo, John, old John. Oh. Sandra. Hi. Is that so? Yeah, this is my, my, my date, uh, Sandy, here. <laughs> I thought we were together. You no. told me, you told me that, that, that you didn't care about the baby and that you still wanted to be with me and talk and, and the other stuff that we do. Yeah, I, I, you know, I say lots of things to girls. <laughs> I don't think she was kidding my oh so subtle winky. <laughs> See, I didn't have time to stop by and tell her what the real story was. I went straight to the police to ask for help. At heart, I was a law abiding guy. I can't believe you've done this. What's. Is this part of the injury? No. <laughs> Listen, you better just scram. Get on out of here. Quick as you can. the moment I saw you, and now you have failed. I knew you were another man. I'm going after her, and she will be mine. And over my dead body, would it be any better way? I seem to really be in quite the pickle, see? I really should have taken that time to tell my lady Vicky what it was, the story was. And now, I'm caught between a cop and a hard place. <laughs> The whole plan was falling apart. She was still alive. I didn't know if John was on the hook anymore or not. All I knew is that Charlotte was waiting for me to do my job. I had to go back and face the music. I left the bar. I walked out of the club. And I went to Charlotte's apartment, where she was sitting on her couch, nursing a scotch. <laughs> Would you like a scotch, darling? Yeah, yeah, sure. Charlotte, Victoria's still alive. Why? I'm working on it. Trust me, huh? I'm working on it. <laughs> she attacked the bottle like a babe on a breast. <laughs> She even burped her 
yourself. Oh. <laughs> and the lady. Look. Look. I promise you, I had a plan in place, but the whole thing fell apart. I'm not going to trust it to anyone else anymore. I'm going to take care of this myself. That's what I wanted all along anyway. We can't trust anyone but ourselves. Not your friend Maria there. Not some schmo you line up to do the work for us. You and me. Don't you see? Nothing's ever mattered more to me. I have fallen in love with you. I knew it the moment you said yes to my desires. I never heard you talk like this so passionately before. Well, what can I say? It's my murderous tendencies. They do this to me. Suddenly I thought back upon that day we first met so many years ago as children in the playground. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, this is, is really fun. Someday, when I grow up, I'm going to be a fancy lady, and I'm going to have all the men love me. Will you be one of them? Well, I would if you want me to. I would really like that, and you can do things for me. Like what? I don't know, like maybe kill people? <laughs> That's really weird, Charlotte. We're only seven. I know. Starting early. But I'm just joking. Maybe you can just, you know, bump heads together for me. No, that's okay. If you really want me to kill people, I'll kill them for you. Oh, Jackson, that's the sweetest thing any boy's ever told me before. She stopped moving, keeping me way on top of the seesaw. She looked up at me as I was suspended high above her. And she said those words I'll never forget. I'm your black widow. <laughs> and she slowly let me down. And never forget it. And I never did forget it. And it certainly wasn't the first time she had let me down. And it wasn't going to be the last. Do you mean it? Can we finally make this work between me and you? Yes, we can. My dear, when I look into my future, I don't see a white picket fence. I see a mansion, and I see you in my bed in that mansion. It's going to take a lot of cabbage to get a mansion. Where are we going to get that kind of produce, babe? Well, I figure we can also get rid of that Maria later, and I can take over the club. Get rid of Maria? Yeah, not kill her. We won't kill her. We'll leave her be. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? You want to get that club into your clutches? I want to be the lady boss. I can make that happen. I can make anything happen for you. I trust you. Don't let me down. I walked out. It had been some time since I'd spoken with Maria, and the time for that conversation had come. Jackson. Maria. Jackson, where have you been? I know, things have been crazy, right? Oh, so crazy. Maria. Good for my That's it. <laughs> I own this bar. <laughs> He has one purpose in life. Let him do it. Jackson. Maria. Jackson. I have, I have news for you. You know how I was telling you we have to get out of here? Yes. Well, this whole time I've been working on something, see? I've been working on a way for me and you to get out of here. Remember that? Old chateau we used to rent every once in a while in Amsterdam. Not New Amsterdam, not Amsterdam, California. Amsterdam, the real Amsterdam. Yes, I loved it there. I bought it for you. <gasps> you bought it for me, Jackson? Sure, sure I did. I've been saving up, see? That's why I haven't been around lately. I just had to make a couple of business trips, a couple of business deals, but I'm doing it for you, see? Now we can get rid of this club. And you can go, and we can go live together. 
in Amsterdam, where, where we always wanted to be. Jackson. I escaped Amsterdam. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You don't have to be running anymore. You don't have to escape anymore. You, you could go back, and you could go back as a clean woman. Jackson, it was horrible. It was horrible. I escaped there. I got on that ship, and I came here. You know my story, Jackson. Listen, Maria, you got to give up this club. You got to get out. But this is my dream, Jackson. You don't need it anymore. You're better than this. Remember, you used to want to be a stage actor, huh? Why don't you go do that? Why don't you go do anything except this? You know what, Jackson? I'm smarter than this. And I know when you're lying to me. I didn't escape Amsterdam for nothing, Jackson. I worked hard to get here. I worked hard. Look, Maria, you're a real <laughs> nice thing. Why don't you go check the inventory, huh? Uh huh. Yeah, 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 of course. What's this about, Jackson? This is about me getting this club. Look, I don't want to hurt you. I really loved you for a while. I really did. But something's different now. Charlotte's back in my life, see? And Charlotte wants this club. Put the gun down, Jackson. No, I'm not going to do that. Just talk to me! I'm going to talk to you through the barrel of this gun. Or at least I'm going to hold it up so that you listen very carefully. I don't want to kill you. But I need you gone, do you understand? So it was a lie, wasn't it, Jackson? The picket fence. This place. Oh my God, Jackson. Look. It wasn't a lie, Maria, but dreams Look. change. Hundred bucks Victoria made. A hundred bucks by talking. Just talking. Don't you get it, Jackson? All we have to do is talk. Listen. I'm going to tell you one more time. I need you gone. And I need this club so that Charlotte can take over. I can either get this club by killing you, or I can get this club by you going away and never coming back. Those are my choices, Jackson. Those are your choices. And you don't want this? Not anymore. I don't need it, Jackson. I don't need it. But you know what, Jackson? I'm going to come back. This is mine, Jackson. All we had to do was talk. I didn't have the heart to tell her she was pregnant with my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting something, but I'm looking for a uh, for Victoria. Have you seen her here recently? She's not here, buddy. The club is closed. You said the club was closed. I was roaming the streets, but I had nothing else to do, nothing else, nowhere else to go. My heart was sinking. I saw her run out, crying. I had to find her. I went to the last place that I could imagine that she would be her apartment. <laughs> it's on. Don't you ever knock? <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Perhaps I was barging when I shouldn't. That's why you were pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, I saw you running out of the club. I cried. Angry at that other man who has stolen you from me. But I'm here, in front of you now, professing myself yet again. A fool. I've always been a fool. A fool in love, perhaps. Yes. But for you, it's been worth it. And you see how other men make you cry, make you angry. I will not do that to you anymore, Victoria. You see? You did make me cry. I know, and I apologize for that. But you are carrying my child. Oh, Our no. child! I know. I'm carrying your child. You already told me. <laughs> so be with me. 
Okay. <laughs> Victoria, your door was open. You, I've got some explaining to do. How I know. dare you bring her here? She's a. How did you cause me to This is Lieutenant Johnson. Oh, thank God. She's the forces lady, Dick. You're a dick. I'm a dick. Lieutenant <laughs> 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 Johnson, it's nice to meet you. Oh, you too. Did so my I'm... sexy act fool you? Yes, I thought you were very sexy. What is this about? Am I going crazy? I should have told you before. Somebody wants you dead. He said his name was Peter Friedson. Peter Friedson? Yes. Do you know? No, I'm afraid I do not. I just went straight to the cops to make sure that there was a case out to help you, but why would somebody want you dead? There's no reason. I, I haven't done anything wrong except, okay, maybe getting pregnant out of wedlock, but other than that, do you still love me? Of course I do. I was just playing undercover with Lieutenant Johnson. Who <laughs> was that together with him? I don't know you, but I do feel like that would be a mistake. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with me, Victoria? Hey. You're a cheater. You cheated on your wife? But you stole me away from her. I Perhaps you should cast that. first stone at yourself. I've stoned myself enough. <laughs> Get out of here. No. Mm -hmm. If I cannot have you, no other man can. Then you must walk and shoot me because I'm going to kill this man right now. No! <laughs> You're a real ace with that heater, Lieutenant Johnson. He was a real piece of work. Thank you. Well, I think. Good news is he was threatening you, so that was fully within the books of the law. <laughs> oh. Oh. I left the two ladies there looking over the dead body. I had to run. It was 6.55. Five minutes until I met Lola for dinner to find out about my sordid past. I walked down the empty streets and picked up the pace I had to run to make sure I got there on time to dinner. That hole in my past was starting to feel like a gaping chasm that was going to swallow me whole if I didn't fill it right away. And I knew the only person who could do that was Lola. I had no faith in that Peter Friedson. John! Lola, I thought hey. someone would see you. I'm glad you remembered to come. I was a little worried. <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to rush the whole thing, but I've got a deposition because I just saw a guy get killed. Hey, what? You saw a guy get killed? It was a whole thing. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Well, you didn't kill him, did you? No, no, but who am I? Let I know tell. who you are. Oh. <laughs> Lola, thank you. Stay. Stay, okay. You are Johan. You are Johan Hans Ben Horvath. <laughs> 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 that is right. These hands. They were red, and you are still wet inside. And with this bug that I will place in your ear, I will control you. <laughs> but first, I must have cigarette. <laughs> um, hi, I'm your waiter. I'm just going to set these glasses here whenever you're ready. <laughs> Do you not remember, Johan? Think back. Think. Think back to that day when you first met me. And I just wish to make chocolate. <laughs> you will make more than chocolate. You will make red syrup. You will make blood flow. All in the name of the people. And at the end, we will have a car named after you. A wagon for people. 
Zeus. Wagon. Zeus. Wagon. My name will live forever? Your name will live forever. Okay. After you do these deeds, you will forget what you have done. See, let's the brainwashing commence. <laughs> do you remember now? I do. As soon as you said my real name, Johan, I could feel the change coming over me. These hands are red because of the communist blood that flows through my veins. <laughs> And he's done good, no? He's yes. done good. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You can keep it down, the other one. It's strange. Please take your seat. Oh. So sorry. So sorry. Thank you. Anyway. What is my mission? Your mission is to find a certain Victoria Volkswagen, who has stolen your name, and who has a recipe for real wheel drive. <laughs> Automatic transmission. <laughs> and radio inside of car that plays music. This last piece we need to be millionaires and take you with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sehr <laughs> gut. Our work is done. Yes. Johan, tutus! <laughs> 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 and I slowly walk the streets. The fog, like tendrils on the ground. The streets, filled like the net of a giant spider web. And me, a helpless fly, walking towards the middle, ready for my body to be desiccated, sucked dry of its innards. <laughs> left a husk. So I came back to my Victoria. Hey, Vicky. Hey, sweetheart. What is it? I've got so little time left. What do you mean? We've got the whole world ahead of us. You should have. You should have told the copper about your illicit past. How you smuggled those Volkswagen plans out of East Germany. How did you find out? I was programmed to find you. These whole five years. <laughs> and I have no idea. What is so wrong with making cars? I don't. I with a radio. And rear wheel drive. The people's car, I know. This was to be my idea. Somehow, it is yours, and I will not kill you for it, because of the Volkswagen. You will not kill me for it. Instead, we will still marry, and we will share. I will share with you my plans, as they have always been mine. Only you, I The engine is in the back. Yes. <laughs> the boot is in the front. <laughs> this is amazing. So now, you and I will be rich. We will sell this car to Americans everywhere and they will put a flower right in it. That sounds so crazy, it just might work. Yes. What? My hands are not my own. <gasps> Hi, <laughs> Mark. Good. 
Screaming for the blood of the woman who caused this all. That sharp, the one in black. I knew what she would do that. Above the Tropicana, right at the headless flamingo stop. <laughs> that is where that. I found her. You. John. No, your heart. I see you've had a little bit of activity tonight. You seem really heated and passionate. I love a man who is heated and passionate. Oh, your feminine wants are very strong. <laughs> I don't know if I can resist. Johan, is that the correct term? It's not John? Johan, Johan, uh -huh. Johan, look into my eyes. Oh my God, you have such beautiful blue eyes. You look right up, opposite of mine. Brown. <laughs> you are black. Wait out. <laughs> ah. Ah. Charlotte! Charlotte! What have you done? What have you done? You are not Peter Fritzen. We used to play at the chocolate factory. Here. Take this. 
He killed me too. <laughs> Lola, you can have this one. Yeah. 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 Oh, da. Yeah, my shot. <laughs> Instead, I was pulled down, down, down into oblivion's darkness. 